Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls stresses that a process toward peace cannot be imposed on the parties involved in the conflict, yet the reality on the ground demands a change to the status quo. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's Likud party and Knesset member of Victor Lieberman's Israel Betainu faction sign a coalition agreement. Jordanian and American soldiers take part in a live fire drill during an exercise called Eager Lion, largest exercise since 2011. French Prime Minister Emmanuel Valls met with his Palestinian counterpart, Prime Minister Rami Hamdallah, yesterday evening in the West Bank city of Ramallah in a bid to win support for the French Peace Initiative, an international conference that is scheduled for June 3rd and seeks to revive the long-stalled peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. The French Prime Minister stressed that a process toward peace cannot be imposed on the parties involved in the conflict, yet the reality on the ground, which the French leader defined as catastrophic, demanded a change to the status quo. Nous savons que la paix sera faite par les parties et que nul ne peut leur imposer. Mais aujourd'hui, il n'y a pas de négociation et la situation sur le terrain est catastrophique. Et ce qu'il faut, c'est sortir de ce statu quo et de cette impasse. Et cette approche, qui est la nôtre, jouit euh, d'un important soutien international, car chacun voit les difficultés. Parce que je pense et nous pensons que la solution dans cette région du monde, c'est la paix, c'est la coopération, c'est un marché économique qui sera profitable aux Palestiniens, à Israël et à l'ensemble des pays du Proche et du Moyen-Orient. Manuel Valls, who is considered one of the friendliest prime ministers towards Israel and Europe, stressed ahead of his visit to the region that a French initiative for a peace conference is aimed at preventing a renewed deterioration into violence and war between Israel and the Palestinians. Nevertheless, Israel remains opposed to the initiative, stressing that only direct negotiations would bring about a viable solution to the decades-old conflict. The demand by Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu for direct negotiations, however, was dismissed by Palestinian Prime Minister Rami Hamdallah, who accused Netanyahu of seeking to buy more time rather than sincerely pursue a solution to the conflict. Rami Hamdallah stressed that 22 years went by without any achievements, disregarding the Oslo Accords which formed the Palestinian Authority in the early 90s and gave the Palestinians control over certain parts of the West Bank and Gaza Strip, nor the fact that Israel disengaged from the Gaza Strip. وما يذكر السيد نتنياهو أنه يريد محادثات مباشرة ومفاوضات ولقاء مع السيد الرئيس هو مجرد كسب للوقت 22 عام من المفاوضات لم تؤدي إلى شيء مع الإسرائيليين ونحن لا نريد, لا نريد هذه المرة أن يفلت نتنياهو من الأسرة الدولية now to Jerusalem, where Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's Likud party and Knesset member of Vigdor Lieberman's Israel Betainu faction signed an agreement this afternoon to have the latter join the government, which brings Netanyahu's coalition to 66 out of the Knesset's 120 seats. According to the agreement between the Likud and Israel Beiteinu, Knesset member Avigdor Lieberman will be appointed Israel's defense minister, and Knesset member Sofa Landwehr will assume the role of Israel's absorption minister. Following the signing of the coalition agreement, Prime Minister Netanyahu stressed that incoming defense minister Lieberman and he will safeguard Israel's security, emphasizing the importance of having a stable government in the face of many challenges. Now 
Now to Israel's northern neighbor, where an alliance of Kurdish-led armed groups fighting the Islamic State in northern Syria announced the launch of an offensive meant to seize the northern countryside of the Islamic State's de facto capital, Raqqa. Spokesman for the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces, whose main component is the powerful Kurdish YPG militia, said the campaign at this stage did not include an assault on Raqqa itself. Aided by U.S.-led airstrikes, the YPG has driven the Islamic State from wide areas of northern Syria over the last year or more, though its advances have recently slowed. There has been no indication of when a full assault on Raqqa city might take place, and Kurdish sources declined to comment on the matter. Now back to Israel, where four residents of the Israeli Arab town of Jaljulia, who were accused of planning to travel to Syria to join the Islamic State, were convicted by the Lod District Court in central Israel. According to a statement on the matter, the four planned on entering Syria either via Turkey or by using a hand glider to fly into Islamic State-held territory from the Israeli side of the Golan Heights. One of the four who attempted to fly over the security fence but failed was reportedly inspired by a friend of his who previously succeeded in joining the Islamic State in this manner as an Islamic State affiliate, the Liwa Shuhada al Yarmouk brigades controls large swathes of land on the Syrian side of the border with Israel. The four were each sentenced to jail terms ranging between 10 months to 3 years. Now to Israel's eastern neighbor, where Jordanian and American soldiers took part in a live fire drill as part of an exercise titled Eager Lion at the Jordanian military base in Zalka. The training is meant to enable soldiers to practice synchronization of tactical maneuvers, fire support and air power. The director of exercise and training division at the U.S. Central Command, Major General Rolf Groover, said that this round of Eager Lion, which is an annual exercise between the United States and its allies, both in the region as well as in the world, was one of the biggest exercises for the United States Central Command with Jordan since 2011. Eager Lion exercise is one of the most important uh, exercises. It's our premier exercise for the region. But it's a demonstration of the commitment to the relationship that we have with Jordan. Uh, not only our mill-to-mill, -mill, uh, military-to-military relationship, but uh, our nation's commitment to uh, Jordan in our relationship together. About 6,000 personnel are taking part in this year's exercise, 3,000 from each country. Director of Joint Military Training at the Jordan Armed Forces, Brigadier General Fahed Damin, said that the drills will help prepare the country's military in its fight against terrorism. التهديدات موجودة سواء من تنظيم الدولة أو من بعض المنظمات الثانية المتطرفة ومواجهتها إن شاء الله راح تكون مواجهة صارمة ولا نسمح لأي كان الاقتراب من حدود المملكة الأردنية الهاشمية فالقوات المسلحة الأردنية والأجهزة الأمنية قادرة على حماية المملكة الأردنية الهاشمية حدودا وشعبا Jordan's King Abdullah has been among the most vocal regional leaders voicing alarm about the Islamic State, which has taken territory in both Syria and Iraq over the last two years. Jordan's military has waged sorties against the Islamic State hideouts in Syria, and the kingdom is part of the U.S.-led coalition against the extreme Muslim group. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.
In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.